Hi, I'm Rob Teal from Teal Custom Automobile. Today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about MIG welding. Now, a lot of restorers have a fair bit of trouble with welding panels on cars. So, we're going to take you through a few of the things not to do, a few of the things to do, how to adjust your machine to actually get a decent weld, and we'll run this patch here where we're actually simulating welding a part onto a car. Okay, I've just run a little bit of weld, and from a automotive standpoint, you tack your panel to stabilise it, it can't move up and down and around, and then you run your bead of weld. Now, a good bead of MIG weld should make a nice consistent bead, and it should penetrate. So we've got penetration on the back, it's formed a flat surface where the thing is in. So we've got the welder set up and working perfectly and that's an acceptable weld. Once that's ground off smooth, it'll be strong enough for a repair on a car. Okay, most people I've helped to weld over the years have had a lot of problems with getting their welder set up properly in the first place. And the big thing that I can teach you today is to read your weld. When you're welding, you have got to be constantly reading the weld puddle. And the weld puddle is where the wire is feeding into the weld. And you've got to watch the width that it grows, You've got to watch that it's laying down consistently and it is actually welding and not building big lumps and chumps and things like that. So what I'm going to do is I'll set the welder up deliberately wrong and hopefully some of you guys will see some of the welds that you're having trouble with and then we'll show you how to fix it. Most people have problems because they're too worried about burning a hole in the piece of material. So they'll set their welder at a lower voltage and they'll get a cold weld that sits on top of the material and on the join and when you grind the weld smooth, you've taken away all the material, the joint is not strong enough. So I've got my welder set deliberately cold, and we'll just do a little bit of a cold weld to show you what that looks like. Now, this is an extreme situation. The entire bead of weld is sitting on top of the piece of metal. There's no penetration. If we turn it over, it won't have even stuck the two pieces of metal together. And there we go, it's, it hasn't made a join even. So that's too cold. From that, to correct the situation, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to turn the voltage up on the welder a bit, and then we'll just see what it does. And as we're welding, it's a matter of watching that weld pool and the puddle on the end and seeing what it's doing. So if it's starting to burn into the metal, we're getting to the point. If it's still sitting on top, it's still cold. So all I'm going to do is just turn the voltage up a little bit and have another trial run. That spatter, 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 spatter is actually very typical of cold welding. What's actually happening is the wire is feeding out too fast for the voltage that's available to create a consistent arc and keep melting the metal. So we still know that we've got to turn the voltage up and we'll get a hotter weld and it'll burn into the material. This is getting better. We're still running too cold, but we've actually got it hot enough that it's starting to make a weld. Now I'll turn it over, and on the other side, we've actually got a little bit of a penetration in the middle. So if you travel slow at this, you will get it to work. But travelling slow pumps more heat into the panel. So if we go up a little bit more on our voltage and go back to a consistent welding speed, this will make a decent weld. So can I just ask, that, turn it back over. Yeah. That circle that you can see around the outside, is that what tells you that you've got penetration? Or that no, you can the see penetration the is this little lump right in the middle. See that right where the wire is on the end of the um, thing, the little tiny lump of weld? Yeah. And that's actually coming through. So a good weld, you'll grind both sides of your piece of metal right. and come back to flat. Cool. Okay, now we're getting close to the mark. This is an acceptable weld. 
So we've gone from this huge big lump at the start where all the welds sitting on top. I haven't changed my wire speed, I've just brought the voltage up. So the amount of wire feeding out now runs a consistent arc and it burns through the piece of material. So if I turn him over, we will have the seam filled in there. We've got a tiny little line where the two pieces of metal were, but for the most of it, it's made one piece of metal. Now, we could grind this weld off and we'd have an acceptable join across there. Now, the next series will do with it way too hot and not enough wire speed. So classic, not enough wire speed now, because we had an arc at the start and it just broke off as the wire burned back away from the join. And as a reflex, I brought the torch in closer and closed up the area and it was able to run a really rough sort of spitty sort of an arc. And it has made a bit of a weld there. But if we just bring the wire speed up a little bit, you'll see the difference in the shape of the weld. Okay, that's made quite a reasonable looking weld now. And I'll turn it over. And on the back we've got a penetration. So that's the signal there. If you just sort of keep playing at it and adjust your voltage up and down, you'll get it to weld. Now, we can probably improve on this a little bit more with a smell more wire speed, and it'll make quite a consistent weld, and even just a smell more voltage on from this setting here. This is your very basics. I can't tell you what you need to set your welder at, because every welder is different, and every operator is different. So what works for me may not work for somebody else in the same situation. But with a little bit of fiddling around, you can get a consistent weld to go through. The other thing is, you need to have your weld hot enough that when you're tacking your material together, it's going to penetrate all the way through on a single tack. So we'll just show that now. I'll reset the weld to where I normally have it, and I'll just do a few tacks. Okay, two tacks, and they're nice well-rounded tacks, but when we look on the back of it, there's full penetration. That one there's not quite all the way through, but it is welding almost to the edge of the join. So that's plenty good enough for a car repair. This one here's actually had a little bit of a bubble in the middle where it's boiled the metal, but once again, for a tack situation, that is more than strong enough. And if you're gonna go and re-weld it later, you can grind them flat, but what I tend to do is just weld between the tacks. There's a classic example of too much heat, too much wire speed. If we're trying to weld together two pieces of 8 plate, 3 millimeter material, this will work fine. But on this little thin stuff for car body panels, it's just going to melt holes in it. So from there, you wind your voltage back and wind your wire speed back until you're coming back to our original style weld. Can you turn it over? And on the other side, we've got a big lump where it's melted through. And we've got a big hole where it's gone through like that. Okay, just as important as having your machine set up is you've got to have your materials set up. So as you can see in the stuff I had before, I ground the paint away from the edge just to make sure that we have good electrical connection there. And also where I've put the earth clip on, I ground that away as well. Now, if you're in a car situation and there's a lot of material on the car, Grind the paint back a good inch and a half or so from the weld, just so that any burning paint doesn't cause any problems with the weld, just um, blowing the gas away and things like that. So preparation is just as important. The other thing is, make sure that when you prepare your pieces of metal to go together, that you don't have a gap. What we want to do is weld the two pieces of metal together, so we're actually melting that edge all the way through. If you have got inconsistencies, and you've got a little bit of a gap here, and nothing that's butting together there and a gap there, when the weld cools down and shrinks, it's going to cause distortion because the areas that have got a gap with a puddle of weld across them are going to shrink more than the areas that are butted together. So if you have your weld at the proper temperature and the proper wire feed, you're going to get a consistent weld all the way along and it is possible to weld across the middle of a car roof 
with very little distortion this way. Wire and gas. Now for automotive use you really want small wire. I run with 0.6mm wire and for all round automotive work that's going to work really well for the whole job. The gas. People are using gasless MIGs at home. Uh, I know it works. It doesn't give you as nice a weld as a gas one but usually it's a situation of economics but if you can afford to run with gas do it. And the type of gas you want argon and carbon dioxide blend. Now every company that manufactures it calls it a different name but your local gas supplier will be able to tell you what you need when you tell him what you want it for. Now the next most important thing is gas pressure. Okay, on your gas gauge there will be a zone for MIG welding. It will have a green section or a marked section for MIG welding and really you can get away with it just right on the bottom edge of the scale. And for most cases this will work well. The things that will affect it is a little bit of breeze. If you've got a shed door open while you're working, and often this is the case because sheds aren't that well lit, that you need to let a bit more light in. So if there's a bit of breeze around, you can wind the pressure up. And you can work with it right up to the top of the scale, but it will just use more gas. So the economics comes back into it. So if there's not much breeze, run it down on the minimum setting that you can get away with. If there's a little bit of wind blowing, if you've got that much wind that it's blowing the gas away with it wound right up, forget about it for today, come back another day. I'm going to try and put a demonstration into a real life situation. So if we've got the side of a car here and we're welding a replacement bottom on the quarter panel or something like that, we'll do a butt weld with it. But the first job is to get it set up and tacked on. So we can imagine we've cut the side of the original car off nice and straight through here and we've got the new panel nice and straight so we've formed a nice butt weld. So normally you would clamp it together with vice grips but for this demonstration I'll just tack it and then show you the procedure for welding. Now, what I've done is a series of tacks. I've worked my way along the panel, and some of it's actually changed shape a little bit because of the heat that's gone into it, and the lap has changed. So, the simplest thing then to do is take your hammer and dolly and just bring them back down flat again. Now, the most important thing with welding is to stay in control of the weld. If you get to a situation where it's starting to distort, stop and let it cool down and come back to it, and then work your metal once it's cooled down. Now, We've only put a bit of weld on. We started off with two straight pieces of metal, so if we've got distortion, it is the weld causing the problem. So only ever work the weld. Okay, I've just tapped the seam back flat again. Now what I'm going to do is do a short weld onto a few of these tacks and work my way along it. Now if you're working along the length of a door, by the time you've worked from one edge of the door to the other, you'd be able to come back and start where you began because this part of the door would have cooled down. And as you worked your way across, the rest of the door would have cooled down with it. So we'll start welding a few pieces. Now we're not going to do a series of tacks and tacks and tacks until you've got a bead of weld along there because that's not welding, that's tacking. We're actually here to demonstrate welding, so I'm going to do a run of weld up to each one of these tacks. Okay, I've done my first pass of welds now, and as you can see, they are probably about 5 eighths of an inch long, 16 millimetres, and that's a good amount 
to actually do because it'll cool down quickly. You can see from the bluing around the welds how far the heat is travelling into the material each side. And the most important thing is staying in control. Let it cool down. Now, because this is just two pieces of metal, it will distort. If it was in a real life situation on the frame of the door or on the quarter panel on the car, you'd have a little bit of crown in the panel, a bit of shape, and that actually helps keep it in a straight line. So I'm not expecting this to come out perfectly flat, but it will demonstrate the procedure to weld it. But we'll wait a few minutes, let it cool down, I'll tap it back into a flat line again, and then we'll do another series of welds, and we'll just weld onto our previous welds, and we'll keep doing that until we've got a continuous weld all the way across. Now, don't be afraid to have a little bit of heat in the panel. If the panel is warm, it will actually weld a lot better. So if you can actually hold your fingers on a weld, and it's hot to touch, but I can actually hold it there, but I've got to pull it away because it's there. That's close to being fine to weld. So what I'll do is I'll tap him back flat, and then we'll weld it again. Just by rubbing my thumb across it, I can feel whether the two pieces of panel are in line, and that way I know for when I grind it off later that it'll just, the weld will disappear into the panel. Now, when I welded this time, I made sure that I ran onto the end of my previous welds. And when you're travelling along, you'll find that your weld puddle and the heat will increase. And if you were to just start at one end and weld your way through, even with the weld was set well, you'd get to the point where the weld would actually fall through the panel. So, as you're ending up, that's the hottest part of your weld. So if it flows onto the previous piece, you'll actually wind up building a gas-tight weld all the way along. Now we'll just let it cool down again, tap it back flat and we'll fill in the last of the gaps and that's a weld through that we could have done on a panel on the side of a car or on a door or a fender or anything like that. Okay, when I started off on these last little filling ones, I was on top of the previous weld. Now, the weld is cold when it first starts, so it needs to build a little bit of an arc to get going, and so if you're building it on top of a previous weld, by the time the heat's got into the panel and it's building a good penetrating weld, you're actually onto the join. So we should actually have a good join all the way through this on the other side. Okay, that's a perfectly acceptable weld. We've got spots where it's booming all the way through and getting a penetration. There's a few spots where we weren't quite lined up and we can still see the line there. But if we grind into it, there'll be very little material gone to actually disappear it on this side. But being the back, you wouldn't bother about it. You'd just paint over it, that'd be fine. Now, I'll just let this cool down and we'll grind across the top of it and we should be able to get most of this just disappear into the panel. With what I've shown you today, you can weld across a panel and you can grind it back smooth. When you're grinding, always concentrate on the weld and just when you get it down to just about flat with the metal, let your disc sort of blend it in with the rest of the panel. And that will be a seamless finished weld on the side of a car 
and more than acceptable. Okay, thank you for watching today's demonstration. In future videos, we will show you how distortion can affect your weld and how it can affect the panel that you're welding into and how you can get yourself out of trouble and solve the problems caused by welding distortion.